Hello students. Uh, today I'm going to do a little video here on trauma assessment, uh, how you can practice trauma assessment at home. Uh, you should practice along with this skill as I go through it too. You should have your uh, trauma assessment sheet from the National Registry as we go through this. Uh, and you will need a few things uh, to do this correctly. First of all, <coughs> you may need a uh, some sort of a stuffed animal or a doll, something with appendages on it. I have a Power Ranger here today. And a little cardboard cutout that's going to be a, a backboard for this station. Those are the two main things you need to do this station. Now, in assessments, the order of assessment never changes. The important thing about assessment is doing things in the correct order. The information that you find out while you do your assessment may change, and sometimes that may change the direction that you're heading on your assessment. But for now, we want to focus on mainly just doing a regular assessment uh, without any complications. So you learn how to do that particular uh, th stuff in the particular order. Now, I've given you some memory aids. Uh, chapter 13, there's a, a uh, introduction to chapter 13 where we have the uh, cinch and good looking couples always by cars together and things like that to help us remember the different parts of a trauma assessment. So for the trauma assessment, get yourself a, a, a fill in for a patient. You can literally do this on any, anything at all. You should be able to do a trauma assessment on your pen if necessary. It's not the props that are important, it's doing things in the right order. <coughs> to start out with, uh, they will read you a, uh, a one paragraph introduction to the station and then you are told that you have 10 minutes to complete your trauma assessment and you should always try and do it in this order today a very uncomplicated assessment on the, on my power ranger here and exactly in the right order that we would like to see you do it again like i said before the information you may find out uh, may differ but the overall framework of an assessment never changes so once I've received my introduction to this, the first thing I wanna make sure I do is that my BSIs are on and I have my gloves on. The next thing I do is think cinch. So I ask the questions, is the scene safe? Is this an injury or an illness? Well, because this is the trauma exam, it will be an injury. How many patients do I have? Um, I need to consider C-spine and I need to call for help. They may ask us how to do C-spine. Uh, I would instruct my partner to hold spinal immobilization on the patient. And they are to hold the patient's head on either side of the head, keep the nose in line with the belly button, and not let go until they're instructed to by me. <clears throat> Once that's established, I can go on now to the, uh, the primary uh, assessment. For that, I remember the uh, saying, good looking, good looking couples always buy cars together. The G is my general impression. What's my general impression? Well, I have a Power Ranger that's uh, laying on the ground in front of me. He was thrown out the window of a motor vehicle. Uh, he is not moving, his eyes are closed. He does not seem to know I'm there. Next comes L for level of consciousness. How would I find that out? Well, I'm going to first try Apu, so I notice the patient is not alert. I next try Vocal by shouting, hey, hey, can you hear me? If there's no, there, no response to that, then I'm going to uh, do the P for pain, painful stimulus. Uh, that's usually going to be a sternal rub. So right in the middle of the Power Rangers chest, we would do a sternal rub and see how the patient responds. If the patient doesn't respond at all in any way, then he is unresponsive. If he is unresponsive, that is his chief complaint. Then the chief complaint would be unresponsive. Next, I move on to my ABCs. I'll check to make sure my patient's airway is patent. And next, I want to know uh, if it's not patent, I'm going to use an, uh, an adjunct, usually an oropharyngeal airway or an OPA at first. Then the next thing that I want to do is go on to breathing. I want to know the patient's rate and depth of their breathing. This would be the time when I would want to uh, uh, put the patient on oxygen and through what device, depends on, on what information I find out. And then I'm going to move on to C for circulation. Uh, the, I want to check the patient's pulse. I'll check his radio pulse. I want to know the rate and the depth of the pulse. I want to know if I see any major bleeding on this patient. I want to check skin color, condition, and temperature on the patient. And at this time, I would treat for shock if there was any indication for shock on the patient. 
Now I go to my transport priority. My transport priority would be a high priority transport. At this point, we move on to our uh, head to toe exam. Since this is an unresponsive patient, then the first thing we would ask is if anyone on scene had any sort of sample history on the patient. If not, we would move on to uh, find a, a set of vital signs on this patient. Required vital signs for the registry are pulse, respiration, and blood pressure. So I'd want to know those vital signs. At that point, I would start a head-to-toe exam on the unresponsive patient. I'd start at the patient's head. I would use my hands and check frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal lobes of the skull to see if there are any sort of uh, deformities or any other uh, wounds or problems. I would next check the bones of the patient's face, check the patient's eyes, and check the pupils to see how responsive they are. Uh, look for any sort of discharge from ears, eyes, nose, mouth, then move on to the patient's neck. I want to palpate the cervical spine to see if there are any deformities in the cervical spine. If not, I'm going to look for uh, tracheal deviation or jugular vein distension. If I don't see any of that, my next move is to expose my patient. So I want to make sure the patient is fully exposed. Once I say that, then I can continue my exam. I'm going to look at the patient's chest, inspect it. Then I'm going to palpate the patient's chest. Start at the shoulder blades, and we're gonna go down the shoulder blades, down at the shoulders, down the clavicles to the center of the chest. Then we're going to palpate down the center of the chest, up underneath each arm on the ribs, and then we're going to palpate down the rib cage to see if we feel anything. At this time, we would also auscultate, so take our stethoscope and listen to breath sounds to see how they are. Once we've done that, we move on to the uh, abdomen, where we're going to palpate, palpate the abdomen, upper quadrants, and then lower quadrants. And once we find out the information on that, we move to the hips. Put hands in, on either side of the uh, iliac crest, either iliac crest, press down and in. The iliac crest should remain stable and not move. <clears throat> if it does move, then that means you have a pelvic fracture. At this time, you would just continue on. If necessary, you do a uh, what we call a courtesy sweep where you check genitalia, then you'd move on to lower extremities. We start over here on this extremity and we're going to palpate all the way down and we're looking for DCAP BTLS. Once I get to the patient's foot, I'm going to check for a pulse. My patient's unresponsive, so I won't have any sensory or motor uh, input in MSPs. Instead, I will just have a pulse. I'll check for that. I go to the other leg, do the same thing. Check for uh, DCAP BTLS, feeling all the way down. When I get to the patient's foot, I again check the dorsalis pedis for a pulse. Come up to the upper, or upper extremities, palpate all the way down the upper left arm, checking for a radial pulse once I get to that area. Do the same thing over here. Palpate all the way down, looking for DCAP BTLS, and then palpating for a radial pulse when I get to that pulse uh, on, on the hands there. Looking for DCAP BTLS, they'll ask you what is DCAP BTLS, deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures, burns, tenderness, laceration, and swelling. Once we get to this point now, we're going to roll the patient over. On the count of the person holding C-spine on the head, we'll roll the patient over. And now we're going to check the patient all the way from, from the back of the neck here, palpate their cervical spine, all the way down to their butox, and see if we notice any DCAP BTLS. Once we've done that, it's time to put the patient on the backboard. So we get the backboard, put the patient on the backboard, and keep in mind that this is not the backboard station. This is the trauma assessment station. So all you have to say is, uh, my patient is now uh, in full C-spine immobilization, we're in the back of the ambulance, we're on the way to the hospital. You have to say you're on the way to the hospital because that's where you call for transportation of the patient. That's very important. If you don't call for transportation of the patient, that's a critical skill and you can fail. Now, once I've got my patient on the backboard, now I'm going to be in the back of the ambulance and transport. I would do any interventions that are necessary for this patient, splinting, anything else that seemed to be necessary for the patient, and then I would reassess my patient. Uh, every uh, five minutes for an unstable patient and every 15 minutes for a stable patient. I would continue to reassess my patient. I would repeat my 
initial exam, repeat my secondary exam, and repeat vital signs. And that's basically the station. I think right now I'll run through it for you in real time, right from the beginning. And we'll say that uh, my uh, uh, Power Ranger here got thrown off of one of those cool Power Ranger motorcycles in a traumatic accident, and now I show up on scene. My BSIs are on. Is my scene safe? Is this an injury or an illness? How many patients do I have? I'm going to consider C-spine and I'm going to call for ALS help. I will first of all direct my partner to hold C-spine on the patient. Hands on either side of the head near the ears. Hold the nose in line with the belly button until I tell you to let go. Now my imaginary partner takes over for me. And now that I've done that, I can go on with my uh, primary exam. Uh, what's my general impression of the patient? Okay, you say I have a, a Power Ranger sitting in front of me on the ground. His eyes are closed. He's not moving. He does not seem to know I'm there. Okay, what is his level of consciousness? Well, I'd find that out by, first of all, seeing if he's alert, which he isn't, using vocal, hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Which he doesn't respond to the painful stimuli, where I do a sternal rub on the patient. The patient does not respond to that, so my chief complaint for this patient is he's unresponsive. And now I'm going to go on to ABCs. Is my patient's airway patent? If not, I'm going to insert an uh, OPA. Then I'm going to go to breathing. What's the patient's breathing rate and depth? I'm going to add oxygen to the patient at this point, probably 15 liters through a non rebreather. Then I'm going to go into circulation. Check the radio pulse. What's my patient's pulse? Rate and depth. Okay. Skin color, condition, and temperature. Do I see any major bleeding on this patient? Now I'm going to do a transport. I'll treat for shock if necessary. How would I treat for shock? I would use oxygen. I would use body positioning and warmth. Keep the patient warm. This will be a high priority transport patient. I'm going to move on to my secondary exam. Does anyone here have any information on this Power Ranger? Can you give me any sample or OPQRST answers? No one's able to do that, so I'm going to ask for a set of vital signs. What's the patient's pulse? What's the patient's respiratory rate? What's the patient's blood pressure? Once I receive that information, it's time for a head-to-toe exam. I start at the patient's head, palpate the frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital skull. Check the jaw and the facial bones. I'm going to look for any sort of discharge out of the nose, eyes, ears, mouth. I'm going to check the patient's eyes and uh, see the pupillary reaction. Now I'm going to palpate the patient's cervical spine. Do I feel any deformities? I'm going to look for tracheal deviation. I'm going to look for jugular vein distension. I now expose my whole patient and I'm going to inspect the chest. Do I see any uh, deformities? And I'm going to palpate the chest. Start at the shoulder blades. I'm going to go down the clavicles down the, uh, uh, the sternum, then I'm going to reach up under the armpits and I'm going to palpate down the rib cage. Do I feel any abnormalities? I will also go auscultate the patient's chest at this point for breath sounds right and left, and now I move down to the abdomen. Palpate the upper quadrants of the abdomen, palpate the lower quadrants of the abdomen. Do I see any abnormalities? No, I'm going to move down to the hips. I'm going to put my hands on the iliac crest, push down and up on it, and see if there's any movement. If there's no movement, I'll go on, possibly do a courtesy sweep on the patient's genitalia if that's called for, and then start doing extremities. I'm on the left leg. I'm going to palpate all the way down the left leg looking for DCAP BTLS. I'm gonna check a pulse on the left foot. I'm gonna to go to the right leg. I'm gonna check for DCAP BTLS all the way down. I'm gonna check for a pulse on the right foot. I'm gonna to go to the left arm and check for DCAP BTLS. And I'm going to check for a radial pulse in the left hand. I'm going to go down the right arm and check for DCAP BTLS, and I'm going to check for a pulse on the radial pulse of the right hand. Once that's done, I'm going to, on the count of the person holding C spine, we're going to roll the patient over. One, two, three. We roll the patient over, and we check the backside, the posterior from the neck all the way down to the butox, and we're looking for DCAP BTLS, deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures, burns, tenderness, laceration, swelling. At this point, I'm gonna put the patient on the backboard. The patient is on the backboard now. He is in full spinal immobilization. We are in the, in the uh, ambulance on the way to the hospital. Very important to say. Uh, 
Once I've done that now, I'm going to do any interventions that are necessary on this patient. Once the interventions are complete, I'm going to continue on with uh, reassessing the patient. I'll reassess the patient by repeating the initial exam, repeating the secondary exam, and repeating vital signs. Uh, that's your trauma assessment, and you should practice it that way. Uh, as we progress through the course, we'll start adding some complications, and that's going to uh, comp uh, make your assessment a little bit more interesting to do. Uh, next up, I'm going to try and do an assessment on medical uh, assessment as well. Thanks. See you soon.